All right, before we do jump into this video, we've got a new crew member here on the channel. As Adam got promoted to Lieutenant, we've taken a new Ensign for the Trek Central Starship. Get ready to meet Ensign Hamish, now it's his first video here on the channel, and he's kind of new to recording, so uh, give him a chance. Here we go. Captain Chakotay is returning to the Star Trek universe, but what does that mean for our brand new show of Star Trek Prodigy? Given that Kate Mulgrew's Captain Catherine Janeway is taking center stage. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Ensign Hamish, and let's get into it. With the cast announcements of Robert Beltran reprising his role as Voyager First Officer Chakotay, as well as other casting announcements for Star Trek Prodigy, it's time to dive into our latest Star Trek theory and see how Chakotay could fit into the story of the Prodigy, specifically how he could be involved with the USS Protostar. Let's dig not only into the casting announcement and what that might mean for the story of Star Trek Prodigy going forward, but also some older information that is even more relevant as of late. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. Star Trek Prodigy is a new Trek animated show about a group of teenagers who find an abandoned Starfleet ship in the Delta Quadrant and with the help of a training hologram of Captain Catherine Janeway set out on a journey through the stars. But why is this vessel abandoned in the first place? Well, with the new casting announcement of the return of Chakotay as well as our Federation species in Starfleet, we could be looking at our original crew of the USS Protostar forced to abandon ship for some reason or another in the Delta Quadrant. Given we know the ship has some sort of advanced FTL technology, it could make sense that the original crew had to abandon the ship. Let's take a look at these newly announced characters and their voice actors before we get into any serious theory crafting. First up, we have Captain Chakotay, voiced by Robert Beltran. If you are watching this video, you probably know who Chakotay is, but let's describe him a bit in any case. Chakotay was a human of Native American descent who originally served in Starfleet, but betrayed his uniform and joined the Marquis. The group of freedom fighters who operated in the demilitarized zone between the Cardassian Union and the Federation. Unhappy with a peace agreement between the two powers, which gave away their co their colonies, Chakotay became captain of the Marquis Raider, the Valjean, viewing themselves as the heroes against the societal injustice of the Federation and Starfleet. The Valjean was tracked down by the USS Voyager, but both ships were transported to the Delta Quadrant, had to band together to get back to the Alpha Quadrant. Chakotay became the first officer of the USS Voyager and began their seven-year journey back to the Alpha Quadrant. Is it not a spoiler to say that they? Is it not? Because it, it seems then by at least the year 2383, which is when Prodigy takes place, which is five years after the return of the USS Voyager, Chakotay has been promoted to the rank of captain. So there is still hope for Harry Kim to get past Ensign in rank. We hope. As captain, Chakotay might have been put in charge of the USS Protostar on its maiden voyage to test out its new prototype propulsion system, with a crew of Starfleet officers which we will go into now. First up is Commander Tysis, voiced by David Diggs. This will presumably be the first in command to Captain Chakotay. Tysis is an Andorian. We have been getting more Andorian characters in the new track, from the new design in Discovery, some classic Andorians in Picard, and even Jennifer the Andorian in the Lower Decks. But having a more recurring Andorian character in the Trek show will be great. Andorians are meant to be this great founding member species of the Federation, but so much of Trek forgets them, with none showing up in the TNG or Deep Space Nine. Next is Ensign Asenia, a trill, voiced by Jamie Lee Jamil. Definitely not a name I actually expected to come to the Trek universe, but voicing a trill is really cool. And apparently she has been a Trekkie since the next generation. We don't know if this trill is joined with a symbiote or not though. If Asenia is a surname, which makes sense following them calling her Ensign Asenia, then she would not be joined with a symbiote, as most symbiotes have very short names from Dax and Tal to Odan and Khan. Trill has been featured prominently in the Discovery Season 3, so seeing more trills during the 24th century will be very nice. We have Jason Alexander returning to Trek, previously having played the character of Kuros in the Voyager episode Think Tank, but he is playing a Tellarite character called Dr. No. Tellarite Doctor is definitely something that would happen, but their bedside manner must be terrible, a species that argues all the time. 
probably not the smartest idea. What is fascinating about Dr. Noom is actually that his name was tied to Star Trek Prodigy over a year ago from some leaks about the show and some characters. Considering that this turned out to be true, it adds some weight to these leaks, so let's look at them in more detail now that we have this new information at our disposal. Before we go ahead, I will just offer you a spoiler warning as we are going to be talking about leaks from Star Trek Prodigy, which this news has partly confirmed. You have been warned, that is going to be a spoiler. You can't stop it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So as stated, Dr. Noom's name came up on the Illumina article about Star Trek Prodigy last year. So credit to them for this exclusive reveal. Dr. Noom is described as a Tellarite in his 30s and that he enjoys arguing and he is dedicated to keeping his crew healthy. His bedside manner is described as brusque, which very much makes sense and what we predicted from a Tellarite doctor. So not much can be gleaned from Dr. Noom's description in this article than what was apparent from the Starfleet Tellarite doctor. We do have another doctor listed called Torgo. She is described as an eccentric alien genesist in her 50s. She chooses to operate outside the Federation to avoid having to follow their rules. Now this is interesting because from this brief description, she doesn't sound like she is part of Chakotay's crew. So perhaps this is another character from around Federation space who has made it to the Delta Quadrant. How so many characters have made their way to the Delta Quadrant is something which I am sure the show will address. Considering that two of the main cast, Jaquim Pog and Rock Tang, are Alpha Quadrant species, and a Tellarite and a Brickarb, respectively. I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. She's a genetist. <laughs> <laughs> she seems to be more than just a geneticist, but maybe even a eugenicist, which is outlawed by the Federation law, making sense why she operates outside of the Federation. It is also said that she strives to push the boundaries of scientific discovery and make the body a patient dreams of a reality regardless of the risks. So she definitely sounds like a eugenicist, but how she will come into the story is unknown. Next up we have Barnes Frax, who is a male Denobrian in his 40s. Finally, we get some good Star Trek Enterprise representation. Finally. Barnes is said to have spent years alone maintaining a Federation comms relay station, which definitely reminds us of the great Adita Sahil in Discovery's third season. As you know from Enterprise, the Noblians are a very social species, with their families being massive from their polygamous relationships. Barnes is thirsty. He's got the horny. Physically, Frex is described as a rambling, portly fellow who is very welcoming until his visitors become suspicious. What this means, who knows? But it does conjure up some scary thoughts. So if this information is accurate, which it could not be, some of Prodigy's story will take place in Federation space, and perhaps this is where Chakotay and his crew are, starting in Federation space and looking for their lost ship as they travel towards the Delta Quadrant and the kids in Protostar. The Protostar could have been lost in an experiment, and Chakotay and his crew are tasked with retrieving it. This is definitely a possibility, as I doubt the kids on the Protostar will reach Federation space so quickly, especially with the Divineer's forces on their tail, like Dreadnought. Get me my shit! The final character which was reported by Illuminati was a character called Vezria, and he is described as hunting for the Protostar, but pretending to be an ensign in Starfleet. She is very intelligent and skilled at manipulating people. What is fascinating is that she is said to be determined to get revenge for her people and destroy the Federation. What is her species, you ask? This was reported before we knew who the Vornukat were, and they are the species which Gwyn is in part of, which would also mean that the diviner, Gwyn's father, is also Vonokart. Could this Vesria by a sister or relative of Gwyn who is hunting down the ship while pretending to be an ensign in Chakotay's crew? And if so, what does that mean for the original ensign in Chakotay's crew? Maybe she is being held by a diviner while Vesria masquerades as her. I guess we will find out. But this does not mean that she believes the Federation are responsible for something that happened to the Vonokart. Obviously, Voyager affected the Delta Quadrant in numerous ways, from helping the Borg defeat Species 8472, to unleashing the Vodwa back onto the galaxy. Now with Chakotay being a captain, this links very much to the Litverse, that's Lit, and the Voyager relaunch series of novels that cover the full circle fleet. We recently did a video on the full circle fleet, so if you are interested in learning more about this fleet, check it out. But in basic form, this fleet was designed to further explore the Delta Quadrant. The quantum slipstream drive was seen in a couple of episodes of Star Trek Voyager, a means of propulsion that can transcend the standard warp barrier. Slipstream propelled ships are generally aerodynamic in shape, despite them being space vessels due to the slipstream corridors offering resistance, compared to that of open space. This is why ships like the USS Dauntless, a fake Starfleet ship, 
that was a trap for the USS Voyager still was very aerodynamic. The design of the USS Protostar is very narrow and compact with aerodynamic lines, so the design very much could hint at the Protostar being a prototype ship utilizing the quantum slipstream drive. So why is this ship abandoned then? If we have been told that there is a Starfleet crew in the show, it seems reasonable to assume that during a test flight, something went wrong and the crew had to abandon the ship. How they might have abandoned the ship is anyone's guess. If the situation was so bad that the ship could not have simply been stopped, perhaps it was in a slipstream corridor? So this vessel is found by the teenagers inside a planet, but would a slipstream corridor allow you to pass through physical objects in real space? If warp is just warping space around you, is slipstream entering a domain of substance? If so, this should allow you to go through objects in real space. With this casting announcement letting us know that Chakotay and the rest of the crew are recurring characters, I wonder how we will see them. Will we spend some time with them also searching for the protostar? Or will they meet up with the kids early on during the show? Considering that this cast announcement was made after the screening of the first episode at New York Comic Con, we can safely assume that these characters will not be showing up in the first episode of Star Trek Prodigy. That's a wrap on our theory video for today. Heads up though, Star Trek Prodigy will premiere on the 28th of October 2021, streaming on Paramount Plus and CTV Sci-Fi forward slash Crave. Regarding international viewing, we have no details as of yet. As always, let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section, because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Ensign Hamish. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> for now, I've been Enton Hamish. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper, friends. Don't you dare cut that in. Don't you.